guys! Welcome back to my channel, Susie Jane Designs. Today's video is very important to me. I shouldn't say important, more special. Um, anyway, it's St. Patrick's Day themed. I don't normally decorate my house for St. Patrick's Day. Don't have a ton of uh, St. Patrick's Day decorations, but I am Irish. I know, you totally can't tell, right? It's not even noticeable at all that I am Irish. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys like today's video and let's jump into it. Do I want to say anything else about it? For this first project, you are going to need a 6x8 canvas, which I picked up from the dollar store. You can print out a quote that you like. This one is from an Irish blessing, which I printed to size. You also are going to need some scissors and a straight razor of some sort. And what you're going to do first is open up your canvas. Once we've got that open, we are going to go ahead and remove the canvas from the wood frame that it comes on. So we're going to use the razor for this. Please be very careful with this process. And we're going to go all the way around the frame and remove the canvas very carefully from the back. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors and just remove any excess canvas that is showing uh, when you turn the frame around. Now we're going to go ahead and take our quote which I just printed on the printer and I'm using a colored piece of chalk. I'm turning the paper over and I'm coloring on the back of the paper where the words are for my quote. I did go ahead and trim my paper down to size so that I could position it a little easier on the canvas. Once I got it into place where I wanted it, I went ahead and taped it down and made sure it was exactly where I wanted it to be so it wouldn't budge. Then I took my pencil and I'm just tracing over each letter, uh, pressing down a little bit hard so that I can make sure that the chalk transfers on the back side. And I'm just going to do that to every letter all the way down my quote. Once I remove the paper from the front, this is the chalk transfer that you'll see. Now I'm just taking the hand lettering markers that I got from the dollar store. They come in a pack of two. There is one fine tip marker and a chisel marker. So I'm using my original quote as kind of a guide to make sure that I am tracing exactly or close to what the original font was. And I'm starting out with my fine tip marker for this. I am going ahead and going down the right side of my canvas first because I want to make sure that I don't smudge any of the chalk while I'm tracing this out and since I am right handed my right hand lays on top of the words while I'm tracing.
now I'm going to go back in with the chisel marker that comes in the hand lettering set and I am going to fill in those letters. You can use a Sharpie for this instead of using these hand lettering markers. I just like these because they have that nice matte black finish and it doesn't have that sheen to it that Sharpie has. Once I finished filling in the letters, I felt like this still looked a little plain. So I'm using my tape dispenser, also from the dollar store. And I'm just tracing a half moon shape on each side of the top of my paper as well as in that bottom corner of my paper. Once I finish with that, I am using my fine tip hand lettering marker and making a teardrop shape at the end of each line and then tracing over the line so that the two points connect by the line. Then I'm going to go ahead and find the middle of my line. It's a little hard to see right here, but I'm going to make my leaves, um, the lower half pointing down, the upper half will be pointing up. And to make this leaf shape, I kind of just make sort of a heart shape that connects in the middle. And now I'm going to continue this process for the other three lines that I have on my paper. finish this I still felt like it looked a little plain so I'm taking my green jute which I also got from the dollar store and I'm um, using my hot glue to make a little swirl shape uh, towards closer to the upper half of my paper and I'm just using little tiny dabs of glue to make that swirl shape in there then I'm going to go ahead and make two more on each side of it sort of making what looks like a uh, three leaf clover and then I will go ahead and add a small string at the bottom once I have that finished to create the stem. Now I'm going to go ahead and set this one aside for a minute and start on the next project. For this next project you will need another 6x8 canvas from the dollar store, the decorative nautical rope from the dollar store, and whatever scrap green material you might have on hand, this one I have is like a suede velvety sort of material. I did go ahead and Google a shamrock free printable and I picked a four leaf clover uh, because I do like that it symbolizes luck. I taped it down to my material and then I just went ahead and cut the material in a square to make cutting it a little bit easier. I just went ahead and cut out my shamrock out of the material. Um, this material did have a little bit of stretch to it so I had to be really careful when I was cutting it out. Then I went ahead and removed the paper from my shamrock and uh, went ahead and pulled the canvas that we removed from the frame earlier, put a little dab of hot glue in the center and laid my shamrock down so that I could then carefully go around to each section of my shamrock and place hot glue on the edges and press that down nice and flat so there weren't any wrinkles or anything like that. The edges of my shamrock where I cut it were a little bit rough so I wanted to kind of clean that up a little bit. I took my green twine that I got from the dollar store and just placed a very small, small bead of hot glue around the edge of the shamrock and placed the green twine down on top of it. Now I'm taking both of the wood frames from the dollar store canvas that we cut away from the canvas and I'm staining them with dark walnut from Minwax which you can pick up at Walmart. 
I'm just making sure to cover all of the visible pieces. I'm not worrying about the back, but I want to make sure I get the inside and the outside edges as well as the front. And then I just wipe it away with a paper towel um, to get my desired color. Now that my frames are dry, I'm going to go ahead and attach them to our canvas. I made sure I positioned it, liked the way it looked, and then went ahead and did a bead of hot glue all the way across the back side of the frame, and then I held the frame at an angle to cut off the remaining canvas from around the back side once the hot glue was dry. And I repeated this process for both of our canvases. Once I was done with the shamrock frame, I did go ahead and cut a length of nautical rope, the length that I wanted it to. I hot glued that onto the back of the canvas. Once that hot glue was dry, I did go ahead and add an extra layer of hot glue over the top of the nautical rope, just to give it a little extra stability. On to our last project, I did go ahead and use these wood beads from the dollar store. I actually ended up using five packages, just a small canvas, um, anything solid really, the cotton twine from the dollar store, which you can find in the automotive section, and my scissors. I started out by separating my beads. I only want to use the dark green ones for this project. There's not as many as I thought there were in each package, so that's why I ended up using five packages, but I did not use all of the beads in from the five packages in this project. Now I'm going to take my cotton twine from the dollar store and wrap it around the canvas, the small canvas that I had about 20 times. Once I've got that wrapped around to the thickness that I like, I'm gonna slide it off very carefully, making sure to keep the loops and tie a separate piece of string around the center. Once I have that tied nice and tight, I'm gonna fold it in half and leave about an inch of room at the top and wrap another piece of string around it and secure that as well. And then I'm just fluffing it with my fingers, coming back with my scissors onto those bottom loops and cutting them apart, cutting away the excess string from the knot that I tied around the top. And then I'm just gonna go in, kind of stretch it out a little bit and cut those uh, longer pieces out. Now I have just another piece of string still attached to the roll of the cotton twine and I'm taking my green beads and I am positioning them on the string just in a random pattern. I didn't want it to be an exact pattern of different sizes. I did not use the smallest size that comes in the package because it didn't fit onto the string. Another tip is to make sure that you wrap the end of your string in a piece of tape so that it'll be easier to slide those beads onto there. Once I got the length that I liked for the beads, I did go ahead and tie the end of the string onto my tassel. Once the tassel was on there nice and tight, I did go ahead and stretch my beads back down to the bottom and clip my string and then I tied it back around to the rest of the beaded string leaving a loop so that I can hang it on a vase or whatever I want to do with it. I felt like this needed a little extra pop of color on the tassel so I placed a small bead of hot glue on one side of my tassel and then added the green twine from the Dollar Tree to that. 
Once I got the desired amount, I just added another piece of hot glue and that's it. In case you guys are wondering, my amazing grandma painted this picture of the shamrocks in the pot and my grandpa actually built the frame so it is very special to me. That's it for today's video you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I post something. Um, until next time, I'll be seeing you. So, yep, mm -hmm. that happened. So stupid, why did I do that? Oh, that's dumb too. Why am I talking like that? Anyway, hi. Hi. How's it going? Blah. So that's it for today's video. Today got 